lots of developments on the soury bilateral ties between South Korea and Japan. From taking a step closer to ending the feud over compensating Korean victims of Japan's wartime forced labor, to a summit between the leaders of the two countries next week. For this edition of Weekly Focus, we take a closer look at the developing story on the bilateral relations with our Foreign First correspondent, Pei Eun-ji. Welcome, Eun-ji. Great to be here. So, the South Korean government announced that it will compensate the victims through a voluntary funding, meaning no compensation from the Japanese side, right? That's right. Now, tell us the details about the plan and what's the government's reasoning behind the decision? Well, the South Korean government announced that a public foundation will pay the compensation and interest on a delayed payment to the 15 plaintiffs that won the lawsuit against Japanese firms in 2018. The same foundation will also cover the plaintiffs of pending cases if the court rules in their favor. Instead of the accused Japanese firms, Korean businesses that were beneficiaries of the treaty signed in 1965 that normalized bilateral ties will be making contributions to the foundation. That includes South Korea's largest steelmaker, POSCO. Seoul's foreign ministry explained the government came up with this plan so that payments can be made as soon as possible, as many victims have already passed away or are in their 90s. It also said it's aimed at improving relations between the two countries that have been strained for the past several years, as mentioned by, as mentioned by Foreign Minister Park Jin. Relations with Japan should no longer be neglected, and we need to end this vicious cycle in the interest of our nation and our people. So those who will be receiving the money are the plaintiffs who won the legal battle back in 2018. That means it's been over four years since the court's decision was made. But why haven't the Japanese firms compensated victims yet? Well, in three separate cases, South Korea's Supreme Court ordered two Japanese companies, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and Nippon Steel, to compensate a total of 15 Korean victims that were forced to work in brutal conditions during World War II. But none of them have been compensated yet, as Tokyo has been insisting all matters were settled under the 1965 treaty signed between South Korea and Japan. But obviously not everyone appears to be happy and not everyone's in the same boat regarding the, the compensation plan from the South Korean government, right? Namely the victims and civic groups, right? Right. Just this week, there were several protests near Seoul's foreign ministry denouncing the compensation plan. The Korean government says it has left the door open for Japanese corporations to take part in the future, but it's unlikely that they'll contribute to the foundation. Of the 15 plaintiffs that won the legal battle in 2018, only three are still alive. And all three have said they will not accept the money unless it's from the responsible Japanese firms. Among them are Yang Gum Dok and Kim Sung Joo. Both in their 90s, they were forced to work at a Mitsubishi heavy aircraft factory in Japan when they were teenagers during World War II. And this is what they had to say about their government's recent plan. <laughs> So I guess we'll have to wait and see if the foreign ministry or the South Korean government overall will be able to persuade the victims and the civic groups. Now, another big announcement coming out of this week was the summit between South Korean President Yoon suk and the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, right? So let's talk about that. That's right. Now that, they've laid out a, uh, now that they've laid out a plan to settle the compensation issue, the two countries are definitely speeding up efforts to improve relations. Three days after the compensation plan was announced, Seoul's presidential office said President Yoon will be heading to Japan for two days next Thursday for a summit with Japan's Prime Minister, Fumio Kishida. This marks the first visit by a South Korean president to Japan in 12 years. Yoon's office says Seoul hopes the visit can pave the way for the two countries to move on from the unfortunate history. While the exact details have not been confirmed, the two leaders are expected to discuss ways to overcome the two countries' trade spat and bolster military intel sharing to deter North Korea's nuclear and missile threat. Other possible topics are increasing economic and people-to-people -people exchanges with a potential meeting of business leaders.
This comes after Kishida had said he welcomed South Korea's latest move, saying he hopes to work closely with President Yoon. Right, and Yoon Gishida summit will highly likely pave a way for a trilateral uh, talks uh, among the leaders of Seoul, Washington, and Tokyo. Now, also there's Jusomia, uh, security alliance agreements between the two countries to share sensitive military information. Let's talk about that. Right, Jisomia has been a rare symbol of security cooperation between the two countries, but has been left in a somewhat unstable state for the past few years. But through the summit between the leaders of the two countries, there is a possibility that it could get back on track. A Japanese media outlet reported Thursday that the Korean government plans to withdraw the documents that notified Japan to end Jisomia in 2019. Citing a South Korean government official, Yomiuri Shinbun said the two leaders will reaffirm the significance of the security pact during their summit next week. Right, there definitely seems uh, to be lots of signs of improvement on the bilateral relations, especially this week. Right, we'll have to keep our eyes on how the compensation plan will be carried out and the Yoon Kishida summit schedule for next week. All right, Inji, thank you for your time today. My pleasure.